And so I want to start off with some fundamentals about DAOs and more in terms of a, a history lesson than kind of a definition. So what's specifically interesting about algorithms and DAOs is that there's a lot of literature, especially in the field of sociology and kind of um, critical studies around algorithmic platforms. So we know that in uh, Web2, there's kind of general consensus that algorithmic platforms haven't gone well for the users because they're centralized, because they can be uh, kind of considered as exploitative and there's these asymmetrical power relationships between the owners and controllers that set the rules that govern the algorithms and, and thus the, the participants in those platforms and the users that may not necessarily understand how the platforms operate and they have no control or agency over those rules in the system that they're participating in. So the difference with decentralized technologies is really about this ideology. So uh, blockchains, as we know, Bitcoin, the first kind of public decentralized sort of fully functional um, uh, blockchain and cryptocurrency system uh, comes out of the cypherpunks. So this very uh, kind of countercultural um, political movement of the 1990s and, and kind of bled over into the early 2000s, a lot of conversation and activity revolved around the cypherpunk mailing list, which was just this heterogeneous group of people, um, largely um, sort of computer hackers and software engineers and people that understood code. And these people believed in sort of self-governance, this idea of autonomy and political decentralization as the ability to govern yourselves and technology as a means to do that, as a means to uh, take action and take kind of direct action and be able to write the, your own rules of the system and make that decentralized. So in such a way that it is a peer-to-peer -peer participatory system and also one that can, cannot be change where the rules are set and they can't be kind of tampered with for for political control or, or kind of political perversion. So then we see the idea of um, DAOs emerge from these kind of cypherpunk origins and Dan Larimer uh, coined the term decentralized autonomous corporation and then a couple of days later, uh, Vitalik Buterin, the co-founder of the Ethereum protocol, who at the time was writing for Bitcoin magazine, called it a decentralized autonomous organization. And he refers to some ideas about what this DAO could be and, and sort of leans heavily on the idea of automation. So using algorithms to commit uh, or to conduct and execute sort of low level functions in this organization and then humans sort of have this role of um, higher order evaluation or, or judgment in these systems. And so it's building this picture and this goal in many ways of what a DAO could be and what a, a DAO as a system for collective self-governance, where the individuals participating in that system get to write the rules and those rules actually serve the participants. And so I actually have that on my blog on Substack as well if you want to read a bit more about that history. 